Well, if you could stand, we go going to pray for our offering, then we go into our message. just want to remind you, first of all, if you send your tithes and offerings to our P.O. Box office, there was a problem that we had with it. Actually, they closed the account. <laughs> uh, and so if you send it, if the stuff goes back to you, don't don't just send them to the same address because we still have the same address. We just have to fix that problem, uh, and it's all fixed up. I just want to remind you that. So we have those two boxes in the back. You can put your tithes and offerings there. You can send the P.O. Box office 14545 East Providence, Rhode Island, 02914, or you can go online and actually uh, give online. There's a button there. I just want to, about an online thing, we are working behind the scenes on fixing our uh, new um, website. It's looking great. It's looking good. Don is doing a great job and just a lot of things that, a lot of things that needs to be rectified. But in the future, we're looking forward to have an updated website and uh, very attractive and very friendly uh, to navigate. So we look into that. But let's pray for our offering. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the uh, privilege we have to give to you a portion of what you have richly blessed us with, Lord. I pray, Lord, that you would use those gifts, all those tidings and offerings for the further of this ministry. Lord, is always a need. And Lord, and so you rely on God's people so we can move forward. And I just pray, bless the giving. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Stay up. Don't sit down. Don't sit down. <laughs> okay, let's uh, get to our Bible here. I don't want to make you sit down and stand up again. So if you turn to Luke chapter 15, and today the title of the message is Home is Always the Greatest Place. Home is always the greatest place. You know, when you go on vacation and after a while you get home, and say, oh, I'm glad I'm home. Okay, so Luke 15, let's look at verse 11. And it says right here, and, and, and he said, a certain man had two sons. And the young of them said unto his father, Give me the portion of the goods that followed to me. And he divided unto them his living. And not many days after, the young man gathered all together and took his journey in a far country. And they wasted his substance with riots, riotous li living. And when he had spent all, then arose a mighty famine in that land. And he began to be in want. And he went and joined himself to the to a citizen of that country and he and he sent him into the fields to feed swine and he would fain have filled fill his belly with the husks that the swine did eat and no man gave unto him and when he came to himself he said how many hired servants of my fathers have bread enough to spare and i perish with hunger i will arise and go to my father and i will say unto him father i have sinned against heaven and before thee I am now more worthy to be called thy son. Make me one of thy hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. And when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and the compassion on and read a, and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto his father, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight, and then I am no more worthy to be called thy son. And the father said to his servant, Bring forth the bass rope, and put on him, and put a ring on his hand, and shoes on his feet. And bring hide a, a fatted cat, and kill it, and let him, us eat, and be merry. For my son was dead, and is alive again. He was lost, and is found. And he began to be merry. Now his, elder, his eldest son was in the field. And as he came and drew nigh to the house, he heard music and dancing. And he called one of his servants and asked and these things, what these things meant. And he, said, and he said unto him, Thy brother is come home, and thy father killed the fatted cat, because he had uh, received them safe and sound. And he was angry and could not go in. Therefore his father, his father out and entreated him. And he answered and said unto his father, Lo, these many years I do, I, do I serve thee, neither transgress I in any time thy commandments, and yet thou never givest me a kit that I might make merry with my friends. But as, but as, as son, uh, as, as, um, as soon as, that, as this thy son has come, which hath devoured thy living with the harlots, and I 
thou hast killed for him and fatted cat. And he said unto him, Son, thou art ever with me. And all that I have is thine. I was meet that we would make merry and be glad, for this thy brother was dead and is alive again. He was lost and he is found. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for this passage of Scripture, even though we know it's a parable. Lord, how true is this in many lives. And Lord, we have a great Father. He's always welcoming us with open arms. And I pray, Lord, if there's someone here among your children that is far away from home, help them to return home this morning. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Can I want to get something next? Can I get somebody? Go to my office. Get a clear, please. Thank you. <laughs> uh, the message this morning is as we look at the learning with the Master throughout the year, that's what we're going to do. We're going to sit at the feet of Jesus and learn with the Master, not from the Master, with the Master, and require a sweet fellowship with the Master. Today is the home is always the greatest place. Let me put it this way. As you have been on vacation for a little while, and uh, after a while you just want to be home. You ever been there? You say, well, it's glad, I'm glad I'm home. You go s lay down in your own bed, in your own pillow. Uh, everything is familiar to you. It is wonderful, isn't it? It's something about home that makes things different. Something about home makes us feel comfortable. Thank you so much. And I apologize for this. As we look at this passage of Scripture this morning, let me remind you that this passage is a parable, okay? And I'm going to explain to you as a parable. And a parable uh, to, to be kept as parables. We should not spiritualize parables, okay? So what is a parable? A parable is an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So Jesus uses this story right here to, to, towards the Jewish people for them to... to Think about what they were doing, but also what their heavenly means, so they could look up to their heavenly Father. There are many Christians who are far from home. They are the children of God, but they are far, they're not living in fellowship with the Father. And the Father stays at the door looking at the child because that child is far from home. My question to you this morning is, Christian, where are you this morning? Are you far from home? Are you feeding with the swine of this world? See, that's what this man was doing. He, he asked the father to give me my portion, and the father gave it to him. And you know what he did like many do today? He went and just, just you know, he didn't work for it. He didn't work for it. The father gave it to him, and you know what? Sometimes that's what happened. When he did, we get, 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 we don't appreciate what we get, and that's what we do with it. We just spend it. So he went out and he spent with money with the harlots and with all his so-called friends. And he spent it all and he find himself with the swine. For a Jewish person is the lowest of the lowest is how you can go. Because Jew, Jewish people don't just, just don't go together with pigs. And the Jesus tried to get an emphasis in the story so the Jewish people will open their eyes and see where they were going. He was feeding with the swine. How many people today are feeding with the swine? How many Christians are sitting with swine today? They forgot the Father. They forgot the love of God. And they're feeding with the swine of this world. And they stink. You go sit with the swine or go lay down with the swine see how you come out of it. Have you ever seen swine? Have you ever seen pigs, what they, what they do? Goodness. Uh, we raise pigs. I know what they do. So this young man was eating the food that was coming to the swine. Let me tell you, that's how low you can be. And let me tell you, Christians, many Christians this morning, they stink. They're dirty because they're feeding with the swine of this world. So this is a parable. It's an earthly story with a heavenly meaning. So often this parable is preached to pertain of backsliding Christians. 
In truth, the correct interpretation is that Jesus is speaking about lost people here, but also also the children of Israel, also those who are, uh, knew God, understood about God, but walk away from Him. Let me tell you. Let's put this to 2021 right now. How many children of God, Christian people, are feeding the swine? Right. See, in the first parable, if you look at this passage of Scripture, uh, the um, I said the Pharisees and the scribes were upset that Jesus was hanging out with sinners. Jesus spoke the, the, uh, the three parables that comprise this chapter that we are here, uh, confront the hardness of their religious hearts against lost sinners. And let me tell you, be careful with religion. I'm a pastor and I'm telling you this. Religion makes you do things that are not biblical because they're man-made Stories, man-made things. We have to have that relationship with our God, with our Father. So the first parable is the lost sheep. We learned that the shepherd went after uh, one and left the, on the, the other hundred behind because they were safe. In the parable of the lost coin, we learned that the woman uh, sought one out of ten. In the parable of the lost son, we see the father looking for one out of two. But don't miss the fact that the father went to both of his sons. One was home. One had all the privileges at home. But when he heard of this brother coming home, he was what? Angry. And let me tell you, is this happening today, folks? Yes, it does. Oh, where you been? Oh, goodness. Now you're coming. No, no, no. You're broken and you're coming to church. How dare you? We should never speak that way, but there are people that do that. We should always open heart and, and celebrate and say, goodness, God is good. My brother's home. My sister's home. Amen. And we don't do that. We become judgmental. That's, right. That's what this brother did here. He was angry. He was mad. How could you didn't do that for me? And I always been with you. And he forgot the blessings of being with the father. The other one when feeding with the swine. You know... Sometimes we feed with the swine for a time and we realize we're wrong. We don't need to go home and be told that we've been wrong. We know we've been wrong. We need somebody to embrace us, to love us, and to help us. Friend, your, your life matters to the Lord. And just as the shepherd sought to sheep, to, to Keep the, the, to, to sow the sheep, I'm sorry, just as the woman sowed the, the coin, just as the father sowed his sons, our gracious father loves you. Listen, you can be sitting in church and be far from home. Right. And I'm not kidding with that. Your mind and your heart can be far from the Lord. Maybe your mind is already in a meal. What are we going to eat? Maybe your mind is on Facebook. Maybe your mind is on social media, whatever it is. God wants you to come home. Let me give you the story. In The Wizard of Oz, Dorothy spent the first part of the movie, if you ever watched that movie, trying to find a way to get away from home. That's the story of many teenagers. I need to get away from my parents. I need to get away from home because nobody understands me. Nobody appreciates me. I'm just going to run away. And many do. And many entertain the thought. But let me tell you this. She, the first time, part of the movie, tried to get away from home. When she finally winds up in Oz, she spends the rest of the movie trying to find a way back home. You know, sometimes we think we, we want to run away as fast as we can from home until we get out there and we see what the world offers and how, we, how broken we are, we try to get back home. Finally, she learns the truth that she, also, she uh, had always had the ability to go home anytime she wanted. All she had to do was click the heels of her ruby slippers together three times and say, there's no place like home. When she did this, she went home. And let me tell you, Christian, you're far away from the Lord this morning. You're away from home. You're feeling the swine. You know how you come home is very quick. He's ready to embrace you. 
sinner, you're not saved, you can come home. We have a God that wants to forgive you. You know what you need to do? You need to repent of your sin. What happens to this young person in his need is unheard to any Jewish person. He finds himself lying with pigs in a far country, working day by day, feeding the pigs and eating with the pigs. Pigs. He is broken. He is lonely. And no one cares about him. When he finally reaches bottom, he comes to, the, the, to his own sense and remember our good things he had at home. This happened to many people. They want to run, they want, like young people, they want to run away from mom and dad. They don't want to be home because they don't understand whatever reason they had until they get out there and they realize their friends and we're not as their friends, they're gone. And they find themselves alone. Now they have a problem. They have to come home. Many don't really come home. You know why? Because they're too prideful. They don't want to come home and they don't want to hear the father say, I told you so. And unfortunately, many, many, in many homes, you know what happens? When some, some try to return home, they find a closed door. I don't know you. You're not my child anymore. Unfortunately, it happens to many children, but not to God. Our God have an open door for every one of his children. You say, but I am so dirty. I've been with the pigs. He does not care. When that young man arrived, that father didn't say, go take a shower. You stink. Go get some clothes. Then I kiss you. Then I will hug you. That was not our God. God our God just went to him and say, embrace him and kiss him and hug him. He was happy he was home. It didn't matter how bad he smelled. And let me tell you, some of us have so much sin that we stink. Let's look at this from several points this morning. There's no place like home. It's not a better place than home. Number one, at home there is a loving father waiting. Look at verse 20. And he arose and came to his father, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. This young man, like many others, experienced the fruit of sin for a season. He had all the fun that money can buy, but reality knocked at his door when he ran out of money. The same reality happens to all kinds of people. Sin only promised fun and good time for a season, folks. We entertain sin. We play with sin and we think it's okay until it shows his ugly head and we the ones who got hurt, get hurt. And many times we drag others with us with our sin. Listen, sin is fun, is enticing. It looks good because we justify it and it's wonderful. Until we reach bottom. This young man, he had all the money, that money to buy all the kinds of stuff. Until he, he spent it all. The Bible specifies the way he spent it. Then what happened? I don't think when this young man left home with his pocket full of money, that he would even thought or think that he was going to eat with the swine. That's what happened to a lot of people. When they begin to walk in the ways of sin, they don't think about what's going to happen. They look, they're, living for, they're living for the moment. They're thinking about here now, now what's going to happen tomorrow. And, and if somebody tells them, like, listen, look at the road you're going, you're going to hurt yourself. They look at you, at, you, at you and say, you're out of your mind. You, don't, you just don't be pessimist. Don't think though that's what, look at the fun that I have. So as many Christians today, they're having fun. They enjoy in sin for a season. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 25 says, this is about Moses, it says, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. You see, while it was, he was in a far country, this boy had no one who cared about him. And let me tell you folks, sometimes sin does that. You're broken, you're lonely. Nobody cares. When this young man arrives at home thinking 
that his father would never really look at him. I was thinking about my earthly father here when I was looking at this message. It was a time when I was a teenager. Teenagers, please pay attention. And I remember something that I did bad. I'm not going to tell you what I did. It was, I'm not proud of it. And I remember my father knew about it. And I remember that day planning my words. How I was going to ask my dad for forgiveness. And I was planning in my mind when I got to him, I was going to tell him. And I walk in the house and my dad was there. I could see the disappointment in his face. My dad was not a man of many words. He was a quiet guy. But I remember my dad didn't ask me why I'm disappointed on you. He just embraced me. My dad was not a guy to say, I love you. I never heard those words from us. I knew he loved me. But today, looking back, I remember, I think about my heavenly father. When I break fellowship with him, when I sin against him, when I do wrong, when I go home, he embraces me because he loves me. So if you are in the ways of sin, if you are walking away, if you're feeding him with the swine, you think nobody cares, nobody loves me, nobody even pay attention to me. Listen, he's waiting at the door. He's looking down the street for you to come home. Are you going home? Letter A, the heart of a concerned father. We see this in verse 20. Look in the middle of the verse. says, But when he saw, but when he was yet a great way off, his father saw him. Just imagine this. <clears throat> when it comes to the, to the sun down, when he sees the sound coming down the road, I'm sorry. I'm just a crying baby this morning. <laughs> when he see the sun come down this morning, discouraged, broken, with, mo with no money, dressed with rags, smelling like, like a pig, filthy. He doesn't wait at the door and say, son, when you get to close to me, I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. Now is my opportunity to tell you how wrong you are. Now I'm going to tell you what you need to hear. You don't hear that from our Heavenly Father. You know what he does? He knows that he knows that boy's been wrong. He knows that boy's doing wrong. He knew that boy was living wrong. He, by even seeing him, by the smell. Let me tell you, that's the same thing to all of us. How many times we are feeding with the swine? We're walking away from the Lord. The Lord's not going to judge us for this. He wants us to come home. And before we even get there, guess what he does? He runs to us. You know why? That's the love of the Father is a, the heart of a concerned father. Let me tell you, and if we love our children, we embrace our children. They already know they did wrong. They already know they're wrong. I can see him as he steps out of the house every day and looks down the road in hopes that he will see his son coming. And I tell you, folks, I believe our Heavenly Father when we walk away from Him, when, he, when, when we live in, in such a way that doesn't please Him, that Father is always looking down the road for you to come home. That's what He wants, for you to come home. Note this, what a picture this paints of our Heavenly Father. Just like this Father, God sees us when we return home, but we, He also sees us while we are wandering in a far country sinning against him he sees us wasting our substance and our uh in riotous living we sees us he sees us in practicing practicing sin and the things that we do and he sees all that but let me tell you what he does in the in the end he wants you to come home why don't you come home do you ever been in the pig pen Honestly, I'm asking the question. You ever been in the pig pen? Do you ever fed swine? Swine stink. <laughs> Let me put it this way. They play with their own poop. That's how dirty swine is. This young man was there with them. Let it be the heart of a compassionate father. We see this in verse 20. There are so, so many kids who have walk away from home. 
for all types of different reasons. So many try to return home, but when they come home, they're not welcome. They find the closed door, like I said in the beginning. They want to come home, and they, they're broken. They're discouraged. They're beaten down, and they're knocking that door. That door is locked. They're not welcome any longer. And let me tell you, I'm glad that our Heavenly Father is not like that. We can come home and return home, and that door is always open. It's open for the lost sinner. It's open for the child of God. God is always to forgive because He's a compassion, loving God. You say, well, if I come home, what God's going to think of me? I think I'm so, I've been so bad that God will never forgive me. Let me tell you, there's no sin that is so great that God cannot forgive. He forgives you. You know why? Because He loves you. People might, might look at you and say, I will, never, I will never forgive you, but not our God. And unfortunately for many kids, they come home, but they have a closed door. Their moms and dads don't want them around any longer. I would just say to a parent like that, I can't, I can't you, how could you? When you raise that child with love and care, all the time you spend, the money they spend, the love that you spend, how could suddenly that person is not welcome in your house anymore? What kind of love is that? But they're out there. They are out there. Again, this father is a picture of a heavenly father. He too responds in compassion to those who return to him by faith. When the sinner takes the step of faith towards God, he moves in great leaps towards the sinner. The ancient Western uh, proverb says, Who draws near to me an inch, I will draw near to him a mile. Who, draws, uh, who walks to me, I will leap to meet him. Actually, James put it this way in James chapter 4, verse 8. Draw nigh to God, and he will draw nigh to you. God is always there ready to help you and to help me. He's able to run to us, receive us. And let me tell you, in those days, it was not common for a father to, or an adult man to run. It was against them, what they were doing, the, against the culture of the time. But I'm not this father. He was so thankful that his son was, came home, that he ran towards his son. Now, put yourself there, parent. If you had a son that is broken, that is out there living in riots and sin, and let me tell you, if you see that son coming down the street towards your house, would you run towards him? Or would you just say, all right, this is my opportunity now. I'm going to give it to you. Now, think about that. When Jesus died on the cross, he took the penalty of our sins. Now the way is open for you to come home. You never received Jesus as your Savior. You've been out there feeding with the swine all your life. Let me tell you, he's walking you home. The door is open. Why don't you come home? Don't play with sin any longer. Why don't you come home? Actually, let me remind you of this. You don't want to die without Jesus. You're making the worst mistake of your existence. Imagine this. Imagine the fear that must have been in, the, in that boy's heart when he headed home. It is clear, seen in verse 17 to verse 19, he wanted to return home as a hired servant. Look at verse 17. And when he came to himself, listen, he was living in sin. He was feeding the swine. The Bible says when he came to himself, he realized the situation. He began to think about where, what he was doing, and he began to think, whoa, well, what have I done? Listen, in order for you to get saved, you have to come to the end of yourself and understand where you're heading. All right, where are you heading? I don't want Jesus. I don't want his gift. I don't want nothing to do with the Bible. Where are you heading? Think for a second. All right, I don't want to, I will die my, my, by myself. I'll, I'll take care of me when I die. Okay, where are you heading? You know, I can tell you where you're heading. You're heading to hell. Right. And so, well, that's your opinion. Well, that's Bible. You are heading to hell. Christian, you're living away from home. You are feeding with the swine. Where are you heading? You're hurting yourself. Right. And you're hurting your heavenly father. And you're hurting people around you. Where are you heading? 
He said he came to the end of himself. And he said, how many hired servants? He began to make, to make, to think about, okay, he came to the end of himself. He began to think about the father's house. Look what he says. He says, how many hired servants in my, fa- in my father's house have bread enough to, to spare? And I perish with hunger. Reality. How many Christians are spiritually hungry this morning? They've been, they've been away from God. They've been away from His Word. And they are starving to death out, out of spiritual food. Look what it says. I will arise. So he comes in of himself. He's thinking about the Father's house. And now he's making a plan. Look what he says. I will arise and go to my Father. And I will say unto him. He's a, actually he's a practicing this speech like I did many years ago. He said, like the Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. And no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants. You see how humble he became? He became so humble. He didn't, oh, I deserve this. I need, oh, I, 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 that's my money. And so, and listen, he came to the end of himself and realized that he was wrong. And that's what happened when we receive forgiveness from our Heavenly Father. When we come to Him and we realize in our mind, we've been wrong. Hired servants were, were lower than slaves. Slaves often came to be considered as part of the family in those days. Hired servants, on the other hand, could be dis- dismissed at any time. He feared being turned away, but he found a father who loved him and who was filled with with great compassion on this boy. My friends, you need not fear the Lord's turning you away. He doesn't turn anyone away. He loves you and He loves me. And He will never, you will never have a closed door when you look to God. So number one, we see a home, the home there was a loving father. Number two, a, a home there is a forgiving father waiting. And, this, and, and his son returns home with a prepared speech for his father. We see this in verse 18 to verse 19. You see, this guy, he comes to the end of himself to realize that he's been wrong. He realized what he did was wrong. He realized the living that he had was wrong. Now, he comes home humble, broken, discouraged, beaten down. He doesn't know what's going to happen when he arrives in that house. But let me tell you, he comes with prepared speech. How many times we come to God with a prepared speech? We've been doing wrong. And we prepare our speech like God is going to be like, you know, uh, uh, like surprise and like, wow, what a great speech. I remember doing that when I was a teenager. And you know what? I never spoke a word. That's a ha- what happened right here. You see, letter A, you see his forgiveness in action. Look at verse 22. And the father said unto his servants, bring forth the best rope and put it on. And put a ring in his hand and shoes in his feet. See, his, his father look at this kid and say, I know you've been wrong. I'm not going to judge you for that. But I'm going to make you one of my kids. Because you've been one of my kids. You're dead in, in trespasses and sin. But now you're alive. For this father, forgiveness involves more than just words. And let me tell you, folks. There are many people that forgiveness are just words. They just say, I forgive you. But their body motions, their actions will reveal to you they never forgive you in the first place. Yeah. Did you ever been there? Mm-hmm. I, I guess I'm not the only person. Whether you go to them and you say, please forgive me, I was wrong. Maybe whatever was that went, w- went on between you and the other person. And they look at you straight in the face and say, I'll forgive you. You walk away the next day, you see him again, and you can tell there was no forgiveness granted there. But let me tell you. This father forgive that son. He puts his forgiveness into action by walking him into his arms. By telling his servants to bring the best. You see, this, is, this son was, was home dressed, uh, came home dressed with the rags of sin. And it was a time for him to take those rags of sin out and put the rags of righteousness in. And let me tell you, folks, I was thinking about this message. I was thinking how many Christians are walking away are walking around with the rags of sin. They smell, they stink like swine because their sin is right before them. What they need to do is come home. You know what the father does? He takes the rags of sin out 
and put the rags of righteousness in. So you can smell good once again. You see, he stands. He stands the son in the rags of a sin. And he doesn't look like a child of his father. But the father orders the best of his robes to be brought and to put on on his son. This rope would cover all the stains and dirt of the pig pen. This rope would make him look like his son once again. This rope served to erase all the visible signs of this boy's sinful past. Listen, folks, how many times we are feed with, feeding with the swine. And we come home, but the marks are there. The marks of the, the living that we had are there to remind us of what happened when we feed with the swine. Sometimes it's good to have it there so we don't forget that when we walk from the love of the Father, that's what we get. So when a sinner comes home, they also receive a, ro a robe of righteousness directly from the Father. Actually, Isaiah chapter 61, verse 10, it says, I will greatly, greatly rejoice in the Lord. My soul shall be joyful in my God, for the had clothed me with the garments of salvation. He had covered me with the robe of righteousness. And his bridegroom uh, uh, decked himself with ornament, and a bride adorned himself with her jewels. You see, right here, God says, you come home. And that's what I have for you. I tell you, folks. Those Christians, they are living out there, feeding with the swine. They didn't come to the end of themselves yet. We need to pray that they will. We should not be like that brother who was at home, who was angry because his brother returned home. We should rejoice. Let it be his forgiveness, forgiving blessings. There are far too many Christians who have returned home and have been forgiven by the Father, but are still living with the guilt of their sin in their mind. Let me tell you, hear me well, okay? You need to pay attention and hear me well here, okay? We come home from the cesspools of sin. We were feeding with the swine. We come home. God embraces us. God loves us, and He forgives us. Here's the problem of many people, many Christians. They never forgive themselves. It is time that we need to forgive ourselves. We know we did wrong. It's come up with, God says, look, said it's your child, I have forgiven you. And we look at him and say, Father, I cannot forgive myself. I've done so much wrong. And God said, it is time for you to stop. Remember the movie we had last Sunday night? What happened in the end of the movie when the lady let go of the balloon? What happened with the other ladies? They let go of the balloons. It was just an action for them to help them to forgive themselves of what they have done. It is done, folks. You can't go back and undo it. The marks are there. But it's something about our emotional being. We need to forgive ourselves. Sometimes we don't move forward because we're still blaming ourselves and say, you don't know, I hurt so many people. I did so much wrong. God forgive me, but I... Here's the key. Forgive yourself. Move on. Let us see. It's forgiving rewards. Look what it says in verse 22. But the father said to his servants, Bring forth the best rope and put on him and put a ring in his hand and shoes in his feet. Some Christians don't think that because they have messed up so bad, God will ever be pleased with them again. Listen. We have to believe this, that our God is a loving God. And when he forgives, look what it says, he forgives. He doesn't go back to you and say, hey, remember what you have done? That's not our God. You might have a parent that does that. You might have a spouse that does that to you. You might have a co-worker that does that to you, but not our God. He doesn't go back to you and say, you remember what you have done? No, he forgives and he wants you to forget too. He wants you to f forgive yourself. Listen, folks, is that, is that you? Then you need to, if you do that to other people, then you need to stop and trust the forgiveness of God that has granted you. It's all wrong for us to, if we forgive somebody, to when some a situation come up, we mention, do you remember what you have done to me? Do you remember that day? Don't come and do it again. 
You know what happened there? You never forgive that person in the first place. That's the problem with a lot of people. The father calls for shoes to be brought to his feet, to his feet, the feet of his son. Only slaves, when we when barefooted, sons wear shoes. The boy returned home, designed just to be a mere servant, but the father is determined to recognize him as his son. In the boy's eyes, he didn't even deserve to be a slave, but even lower, as a servant. The father, however, looked at him and said, "You are worthy. You are my son." And let me tell you, you are feeding with the swines this morning. God is looking at you and say, come home. I love you. You are my child. I love you. Note this. Let me just remind you today that you are not a nobody. You are somebody in the eyes of God. Don't matter where you've been. Don't matter how many scars you have in your body from previous sinful things. Let me tell you, you are somebody in the eyes of God. God loves you. Where was the prodigal son feeding you with the swine? Where was the friends? The friends that he had was the pigs. You know, sometimes, you know, I, I laugh today when we look at social media and we say, oh, I have like 1,500 friends. The other one goes, I have 2,000 friends. Let me put it this way. Are they your friends? Really? A friend is one who walks in when everybody walks out. That's a friend. A friend is there when you're crying. A friend is there when you rejoice. A friend is, is there for all seasons. That's a friend, and they're hard to find. You know, Jesus is a true friend. He is there with you for all seasons. When you're crying, he's there. When you're broken, he's there. When you're hurting, he's there. When you're discouraged, he's there. Where's your earthly friends? If you have one, hold up to them. Note this. Let me just remind you today that you are somebody. In the eyes of our Heavenly Father. Number three. A home there is a celebrating father waiting. Look what it says in verse 23. And bring hither the fatted cat and kill it. And let us eat and be married. Get this. Some Christians feel that it's very hard to return home after that what they have done. They feel that if they return home they will be judged. Let me tell you. I, I experienced this one time. We had a young man in our church. A young man in my age. So I'm still young anyway. <laughs> But he was a young man, and he, 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 he kind of slid away from church. He disappeared out of church for a while, for a long while. So we had a man's, it was a Father's Day activity, Father's Sunday. We had a canoe trip. So father and son went on a canoe trip. Patrick remembers that, a great adventure. <laughs> I'm not going to mention that. But anyway, uh, we had a canoe trip. And guess who showed up in that thing? The man who was there showing up. No, they was not the same guy that I knew before. And I'm not judging anything. I'm just saying, I'm going to show you a little bit how he looked. He had the, since then, he put tattoos on his body. He didn't look the same guy. He had other things going on. So I call him, it happened that, I didn't call him aside. It happened that we got to be by ourselves, and I began to talk to him. So I told him, I said, hey, good to see you. It's so good to see you. And he goes, well, are you judging me? I said, no, no, I'm, I'm glad. I'm just I'm glad to see you. He said, when you come into church, and he said, I can't go to church. I said, why? What are people going to say of me? Look at my tattoos and my body. I don't look the same person. I did so much wrong. What are people going to think of me? See, in their mind, in his mind, he's thinking the worst. I said to him, I said, I believe people will embrace you and be glad you're coming home. And they were. It was a good celebration when he came home. That man was dead in trespasses and sin. He was saved, but you know what I'm talking about here. When he came home, and, he, and then I approached him at the end of the first service, and he said, well, I was thinking differently. This young man right here, same thing. Look what he's doing. He's going home, and he's planning what he's going to say to the father. He's broken, but he's willing to come home. And guess what? He finds a loving father there. And a lot of times it happens to us, what people are going to think if I come home? Don't be like that, brother. Because in some churches it happens. There is a brother there that is angry. That A, you see the instructions for the celebration. And bring hither the feathered cat and kill it. And let it, us eat and be merry. After the sun has been covered and restored to this place in the family, 
the father have a celebration. Let me tell you, folks, when we have a brother or a sister that slips away because of sin, they're feed with, feeding him with the swine. When they return home, return, return home, it's celebration time. The heavens rejoice, so should we. That brother was, is hurting. That brother, they, in there, they know they did wrong. Let's embrace them and love them. Because that's what our Heavenly Father wants us to do. Do you realize that the Father here doesn't, doesn't, is not hot on the Son that is home? He just reminds the Son of the blessings that He have being with the Father. I think sometimes we Christians, we forget the blessings that we have when we walk in sweet fellowship with the Lord. I think we, for, we take for granted and we forget the blessings that we have. And this young man, of course, forgot the blessings that come from comes that to walk in sweet fellowship with the Lord. Let it be the fellowship in the celebration. So the celebration begins. The father invites the servants, the neighbors, and the friends, and the family for a great celebration. Let me tell you this. What do you think Sunday is? Right. What do you think Sunday is? Yep. Sunday is a time of celebration. All right, you come to church and you're broken and you're discouraged. You don't feel like singing. You don't feel like you just want to slip or you don't want to want to be noticed by anybody. But let me tell you, we meet together here for a great celebration. Right. We celebrate our risen Savior. Amen. That's what Sunday is. Listen, this father right here has a great celebration because this son was dead and now is alive. And he gives the message to the other son, as should, so should we. Sunday is a great celebration time. We rejoice together because we are together. And we praise the Lord for it. Because it might come a day that we're not able to be there. For whatever reason. This is a picture of many who are in the family of God. They are always around the Father, but they take Sometimes him for granted. They do not enjoy this fellowship and they refuse to, to rejoice when someone comes to know him. Let me put it this way. Almost done with this. The Bible is not clear what it says. But the Bible doesn't tell us if that other brother went to the celebration. Did he go? Or did he didn't go at all? We know that he was angry. The father didn't judge him, but the father explained to him about those blessings that he had to be with them the whole time. But the Bible doesn't say if he went there or not. And that's a said. I mean, why he's not there? God is God. We don't know. We want to know, right? But God, the Bible, or the Lord cho choose not to reveal that to us. So what a blessing it would have been for his elder son, or was the other brother, to be there and ran to his brother and say, Brother, I love you. Welcome home. A lot of times we Christians, we are guilty of that. We have a brother, we have a sister who's been away from home for a long time. They return home and we fail to go to them and hug them and kiss them and embrace them and say, I love you. Welcome home. I conclude with this. Where are you today? Are you feeding with the swine? If you are feeding with the swine, you need to sit down and come to the end of yourself. Where are you heading? Feeding with the swine. Your father's waiting for you at home. He's looking down the street. Are you going home? You never received Jesus as your Savior. You need to come to the end of yourself. Where are you heading? Think for a second. First of all, you are dying. Day by day, you are dying. Like a flower, you know? It blooms and begins. You are dying. Where are you heading? Is your only hope the grave? And that's it? God is waiting for you to come home. Amen. How long are you going to play with this game 
I'll take Jesus before I die, when I'm just dying in my bed. Let me tell you this. The odds are you will not. The Bible says salvation is now. Now is the appointed time. Now is the day of salvation. You know why? Because you might go to sleep tonight and don't wake up. And you say, well, you just don't try to scare me. Yes, I'm trying to scare you. Yeah. Run to Jesus. Because that's what you need to do. That's what this young man did. He ran to God. He ran back home. He was done. He was tired of that type of living. You're not tired of your sin? Let me tell you where your sin would take you. If you're not saved, it would take you to hell. Oh, hell is not that bad. I invite you to read the Bible and see for yourself what God says about hell. And you a child of God? Where are you heading? Come home. Let's pray. Heavenly Father.